Navi Mac Life. Welcome back to the channel. No, this is not a Navi. You're looking at a Honda Rebel 1100 DCT, and this is my review. So if you're not familiar with the DCT, it stands for dual clutch transmission. Honda offers it, and this here is the Rebel. The Honda Rebel, you can get in a 300, a 500, and the 1100, and then they have an 1100 DCT. So essentially it's an automatic bike. So if you look here on your screen, this is a picture of dual clutch transmission and kind of how it works. It is essentially two clutches, dual clutches that work the transmission. This is a 2023 Rebel 1100. It is essentially 1100 cc's, technically 1,083. Comes in two colors, metallic charcoal gray. You can also get it in a like metallic green color for this 2023. Visually, the thing I love the best about this Honda Rebel 1100 DCT is that there is no chrome. Not a big fan of chrome on a motorcycle. To me, it gives Harley vibes, and those aren't the vibes I'm going for. This has everything in matte black, which I love. Even the rims are like a matte gray, almost black. I love that about this bike. So wheelbase on the Honda Rebel 1100 is roughly 60 inches. Seat height about 27 inches. You can definitely flat foot this bike if you are a shorter stature. I am five foot eight and I can easily flat foot this bike. I think I can flat foot this bike easier than I can the Honda Navi. The weight on this bike is roughly 487 pounds. So if you are stepping it up from a Honda Navi to a Honda Rebel, you're doubling the weight. So keep that in mind. The Honda Rebel 1100 is 86 horsepower and roughly 72 pounds of torque. Top speed is 99 miles per hour. And the zero to 60 is roughly 3.4 seconds. Guys, this bike is very fast. With the DCT transmission, one thing I love about the DC transmission is just how smooth this thing shifts. So essentially the DCT is an automatic bike. It upshifts for you and it downshifts for you. And what I have noticed is I cannot believe how smooth this thing shifts. The Honda Rebel 1100 will do the quarter mile in 12.1 seconds. So the 2023 Honda Rebel 1100 DCT is a 1,083cc liquid-cooled parallel twin four-stroke engine. The bike is a unicam single overhead cam and four valves per cylinder. The bike is electronic fuel injected and has a 46 millimeter throttle body. For the Honda Rebel 300, you're looking at a price around $46.99. The Honda Rebel 500, around $64.99. The Honda Rebel 1100, $94.99. And then add about another thousand for the DCT. And now they have another version called the Honda Rebel 1100 T, which gives you a headlight cowl and hardcover bags on the side. So let's take an up close look of the Honda Rebel 1100 DCT. It does come with two keys. So essentially you're getting a spare key to turn it on. You just twist up and that will turn your bike on. And then that will turn on your gauges. Turning it back to the left, we'll shut it off. Pressing it in and then turning will actually unlock the seat. That's as simple as it is. And then you have just a little bit of storage and you do have a USB. It does come with a toolkit, a manual, and just enough room to put maybe your wallet and one small other item, possibly a phone, if you're not gonna mount it to the bike itself. You do have a locking gas cap, holds about three gallons of gasoline. It is pretty decent on gas. I noticed in standard mode, I'll go over the different modes in a minute. It is all LED lighting. You do have the option to buy a OEM passenger rear seat from Honda. 
and it comes with the seat and it does come with foot pegs for the passenger. It's roughly around $135 if you're interested in that. You bolt it down here and you bolt it there, the seat and then the foot pegs, you actually have to remove the seat and then there's a process you need to do to bolt the foot pegs in. All right, I figure I'd give you a nice shot of it here in the sunlight. See the metallics and the paint here with the sunlight. So since it is the Honda Rebel 1100 DCT, you do have a foot brake right here, similar to the Honda Navi. If you've ever been on a Honda Navi, here is the stock exhaust. It's got these dual pipes coming here. It's a little bulky it is a quiet exhaust when you do get on it though you can hear a little bit of a rumble it does sound pretty good you do have dual shocks which can be adjusted nice uh clear tail light with the clear turn signals up front here you have a an adjustment for your brake you can adjust the pressure of this brake I have it set at three right now. It goes up to six. So let's go over some of the controls here. You have a neutral and you have a drive. So when you start the bike up, it is automatically in neutral. Once the kickstand is up, then you can turn it to drive and you can actually start to ride the bike. If you still have the kickstand down and you try to throw it in a drive, it will not do that. This button here is A and M, stands for automatic and manual. So yes, a cool feature of this bike is, if you want, you can switch it to manual mode and actually control it over here where you have a minus and a plus. So you can control the gears this way, almost similar to paddle shifters on a car. This right here is your parking brake. To set your parking brake you just pull it up until it clicks to release it you just press this button here and it goes back down what this here is a selector button so basically this is your up and down it'll allow you to control the screen here and go to your different settings mode puts it into different modes obviously so if you want to take it out of standard mode and put it in the sport you would just click this here is your horn. The horn is exactly the same horn as the Honda Navi, which it's kind of funny that this big bad bike has a little tiny scooter horn. Here is your turn signals, left and right. Also, it, you have to cancel it out yourself by pressing in, also similar to the Navi. It does have a hazard button, so if you want, you can hit your hazards. Another cool feature here is you also have your brights all easy access and then you have a pass button those are the standard stock mirrors they are circular and a lot of people like to refer to them as the mickey mouse ears some people hate them i might eventually go over to um handlebar and mirrors i'm not sure i actually don't mind these mirrors i really don't dislike them that much some people complain that these mirrors, all you can see is your shoulder. Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know if they're bigger guys, but I can actually see great out of these mirrors. Way better than the Honda Navi. I can see everything to my left, everything to my right perfectly. So another question I get asked, is it belt driven or chain driven? This is, yes, chain driven, which I do like. You got nice right here, 1100 integrated into the side, into this panel right here. There are your foot pegs right here. 
All right, let me uh, start it up for you guys. So basically, here's a quick startup tutorial. You just turn it, let the numbers do its thing, press start. That's it, it's automatically in neutral. And then you have your time temperature. Showing you what gear it is in. It's in neutral, obviously. Red line's at eight. So if you come over here and you hit the mode, that arrow to the left switches it. So right now we're down below. We hit it trip. Now we're up here where we're in our different riding modes. It's in standard currently. So if you hit select, Put it in sport. User is a customizable setting, so you can set the bike to your standards. Rain mode, standard mode, sport. So when you start the bike up, it's automatically in standard mode. Once you get on the bike and you're ready to ride, like I said, put the kickstand up and you throw it in the drive and you are ready to ride. You also have a cruise control here, which you can set. Please turn on the light. There's your resume, plus and minus. I'll let you guys hear it revved up. It is the stock exhaust. Not sure how that translates on video, but it's got some sound to it. It is letting me know that the parking brake is on. So I would want to release that before I start to ride. To shut off the bike, you just simply hit the kill switch and turn the key. So typically with the three gallon tank, most riders are getting roughly 41 miles to the gallon. But I know it all depends on your riding style and how heavy handed you are. The engine takes 4.4 quarts of oil. Here is your oil dipstick. To do an oil change on a Rebel is pretty simple. There's many YouTube videos out there on how to do it. If you were to go to your Honda dealership and have them do it, you're looking at anywhere from 100 bucks to $110 for them to do an oil change on your bike. So. I wouldn't be discouraged. Um, just, uh, just go online and uh, pretty much do it yourself. It's really not that hard. And also, people get worried if they do things like that. Is it going to void their warranty? It is not. Doing thing, doing your own maintenance on a bike like that is not going to void the warranty. If your Honda dealership is charging you more than that to do an oil change on a Rebel, then I would look elsewhere because. Any more than a hundred bucks is way too much. And I'm in Chicago, so expensive town to live in and a hundred bucks is what you should be paying. I know a lot of guys like to change out their grips, but on this 1100, I actually don't mind these grips. They got some nice stickiness to it. And I'll probably end up keeping these grips. I, I actually truly do like these stock grips. And just remember that's, you know, personal preference. If you want to change it out for style or color, that's all on you. But I actually don't mind those grips at all. There's many companies out there that do offer aftermarket exhaust, Vance and Heinz, and then there's Kaufman's, there's some other brands out there too. So how fast is the bike? The bike is fast. With this DCT, the transmission is so smooth. I mean, this thing takes off. I can't. I couldn't believe how quick this thing just gets up and goes. I did hear though at top speed at around 90 miles an hour to 99, the bike does get a little bit wobbly, a little speed wobbles going on. I don't ever plan to take it that fast. So, but from what I've heard, that's how the bike reacts. Seat comfortability, um, it's pretty decent. Some people have been complaining, you know, that, it, you know, your rear end hurts a little bit after a while. I've actually not ran into that. I've rode it for uh, 
a good solid hour, hour and a half. I didn't have any, no complaints here. Um, Honda does also make an OEM factory upgraded seat you can get. It almost has some cross stitching into it. I don't think it's technically stitching. It just has the look, but Honda does offer that too. If you're a Honda Navi guy, this is something you're not used to seeing, but these are anti-lock brakes that come standard on the Honda Rebels. And the bike does have a handlebar lock, which is nice, just like the Honda Navi does. If you're new to motorcycle riding and you started out with a Honda Navi, I probably wouldn't recommend going up. I probably wouldn't recommend going from a Navi to a Rebel 1100. You might want to start out with a Rebel 300 or 500 and then work your way up to an 1100. That is all personal preference and that's all about how comfortable you feel as a rider. Keep in mind you would be going from a Honda Navi 110 cc's to 1100 cc's which is a huge difference. So guys my pros and cons uh, if you were to ask me the cons on this bike is I mean, I really have no cons. The only thing I might, the only con I might have is I wish it did come with the passenger seat and foot pegs. I mean, the Honda Navi comes with a passenger foot pegs and technically the seat since it's a long, since it's a longer seat. So I do kind of wish it did come with that. Um, and then with the option to take it off, if you didn't want that, that I kind of feel like the 1100 and I'm speaking mainly about the 1100 since you are paying a higher price point you're paying the top of the top I figure you should get the seat or maybe just they should hand you it as you walk out the door the seat and the foot pegs and say here you go in case you want to put it on um, I kind of feel like it should have that I also feel like the 1100 in, I also feel like specifically the 1100 should come with the uh a little bit more stylish seat I was talking about with the cross stitching, cross stitching. Um, I feel like it should come with that too, just to separate it a little bit more from the 500 and 300. Uh, but that's really it. I have no complaints about this bike. There's really no cons. If you wanna know my pros about the Honda Rebel, uh, everything. It's, I love it. I love everything about this bike. I love the style of the bike. I like how low you sit. I like that the tank sits above you. I love the handlebars. Everything feels really good quality on this bike. I love the tires on this bike. I love the LED headlight. I think they did a really good job with this headlight. I love that they did a matte black and then there is a little bit of shinier black around the frame, which is pretty cool. Paint color is amazing and the speedometer is super cool too. I have no trouble seeing that day or night. It looks really cool. So guys, if you ask me, I have no complaints about this bike. Um, oh, maybe the horn. The horn's weak. If you want to know what the horn sounds like, go run out to your Honda Navi and press it. There you go. But other than that, those are just minuscule little things. Those are nothing to complain about. If you want a Rebel, go get it. This bike's awesome. And also, you cannot beat Honda's pricing. The Rebel 300, 500, 1100, compared to other brands, I think Honda, I think Honda does it really good. So if you're keeping your Navi and you just want to step it up to a bigger bike, I suggest the Honda Rebel. If you're going to sell your Honda Navi because you want a bigger bike, I suggest the Honda Rebel. It's fun having both though because the Navi you can just hop on and just you know get going wherever you want real quick. Plus, I still love the whole mini moto scene. If you have any questions about the Rebel that I can answer, just drop a comment down below. I get back to everybody on the comments. Guys, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps with the analytics. If you have not subscribed, can you just pause the video right now, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot. It'll also let you know in your recommended when I put out a new video. If you wanna know right away when I put a new video out, hit the notification bell. That'll let you know right away. Guys, go get a Honda Rebel. This bike is awesome. Well, guys, with all that being said, I appreciate you guys for watching my channel. Tons more Navi content, tons of Rebel content. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.